All right, so this hand is extraordinarily keepable. Um, so easy for Rika's shows in turn one. Sometimes again, it's in there and like actually does work. And sometimes it's just able to stop at the ground. If it can just stop it up until we get to Rage of Perforos and Thunder Brute, that would be uh, exceptional. Exceptional, I need to learn how to speak. All right, so we're guaranteed five lands right now. Um, I'm a proponent of playing percentages. I know a lot of people will tell you, uh, like fetching in your upkeep or on your opponent's end step isn't super important, but I think that like every percentage point really does help you win magic games. Uh, so I'm a proponent of like searching my library here, uh, to cut my dead draws by a few percent. Um, he played a sword by centaur, which means we're going to have to keep our Farikish Chosen back, probably, because I definitely don't mind trading for one, especially uh, if he's playing something along the lines of mono green. There's a temple, which actually helps out a lot. It's our sixth land for Thunderbrute. Wow, Eater of Hope's going right back on time. We can potentially go Rage of Perforos, Thunderbrute, Eater of Hope, which my guess is our opponent won't be able to beat. That's only a guess, though. It also depends on if they play anything pre-combat here. Um, any sort of enchantment or anything like that on the Swordwise Centaur, and we are, of course, snap blocking. It's not really an option. Uh, Seder Grove Dancer, if that counter goes on the Centaur, we are also blocking, but it looks like he's going to diversify a little bit. We don't mind taking two next turn, but he really doesn't want to throw away that Centaur. So it looks like we're just going to stare at each other for a little while. Don't mind that at all because our late game is so powerful. I mean, like, either a 5-5 five five with haste for 6 or an 8-8. Eight eight. Both of those having trample is very solid. If he attacks with just the Grove Dancer, we're more than happy um, taking 2 and then either raging the Swordwise Centaur or whatever else he plays. Alright, so that's definitely something we're happy about being able to rage. Um, and the silence means that as soon as we draw an extra um, an extra sh swamp, we should be able to two for one him with it. This will try to scry us into one probably, so that we can for sure play Eater of Hope. Yeah, that, that's definitely a good hold of rage because I don't want him to be able to keep my Farika's chosen tapped down. All right, Kragen Butcher is not something we need here. So I definitely don't mind getting rid of it. Although I wouldn't have minded drawing it all that much either. So we're looking for him to attack with the 3-2 is my guess actually. Oh, so again, just taking 2. Our deck like being so grindy and full of removal really just wants our opponent to be on a similar plan. Although the issue comes up possibly against the blue control decks. Um, yeah, that would be where the issue comes up. Alright, so two cards in hand. I'm not sure exactly if they can target it or not. So now the question is, is do we want to go Silence on the Phalanx Leader or just Thunder Brute Eater of Hope? My guess is we just want to stick to the original game plan because he can attack with Phalanx Leader. And if he pumps his whole team, I'll still be able to trade with one guy, eat one guy, and then play Eater of Hope, or possibly silence two things. So he very quickly makes it an 8-8, eight eight, making me think um, that he has Divine Verdict, or possibly that he doesn't know what Trample means, or that he is Banishing Light. I suppose it's also good. Um... You give protection to the centaur here so it can get in, is my guess. Yeah, so I'm not exactly sure what's scary for him. The 6-4 or the 8-8 eight eight with trample. I mean, one does fly. Okay, this is an easy trade with the phalanx leader. Like a very easy trade there. Swamp's going to be so good at some point. Alright, um... We just have to go for Eater of Hope. There's nothing too bad for us on the battlefield at this juncture. Although, if 
in hand is a pump spell instead of a land. I mean, obviously, if it was a pump spell, he would have played it that turn. Um, put me to, like, six or whatever. And then had me dead right now. But, my, I mean, if it's anything good, I could possibly be in some trouble. Wow, that was good. So I'm going to be able to Magma Jet Silence the Believers. Whew. Yeah, definitely better than Spy for returning here. Although he does have a double green Swordwise Centaur, so I could be led to believe that he has a double green something else, and I just want the Spiteful for that specific thing. Really hoping he attacks here. Yeah, I'm going to block here, and then... My guess is he's somehow getting blown out, unless he has exactly Divine Verdict. Savage Surge. Alright, so that's gonna... That Savage Surge is gonna eat a Magma Jet. And we're going to happily scry two mountains to the bottom of our deck. Um, this is also time for Silence the Believers, and I believe we're killing... Yeah. We're okay going to 7, but we really don't want to go to 5 against, like, a white deck. That could very easily have things to mess with our plan. Um, he doesn't have God's Willing, or else that would have already been played. He may have another, like, dirtily creature, but the two for three is in our favor. Spite of Mogus. Well, that's so good here. So we have Silence the Believers, Farika's Chosen, Rage of Perforos. So it's going to just kill the Seder Grove Dancer. So now we're on the just kill everything plan, I guess. Um... Swamp goes to the bottom, so these scries becoming huge. I guess it would have been fun to like build around the scry mechanic. I can definitely see that being something you want to do in like a Swiss draft. Um, if you are able to first pick it, you know, hopefully get some flame speaker adepts and whatnot. But I don't think that's a card that you want to play around in such like a competitive draft as an eight four like we're in right now. Um, Gorgon's Head is possibly the nut here. I'm just gonna straight up... I mean, I can always play defense if I need to, but I don't need to right now, so I'm just gonna straight up kill that. Is there a reason it didn't let me destroy a land? I'm actually going to screenshot this. Because I have no idea why that would have happened. I mean, obviously, Eater of Hope is, or Spiteful Blow is a new card. So it could have been like a programming issue. What's this big thing? Heliod's Emissary. So we're going to attack right past that because. It would just tap our thing down anyways. Wait, how did we get rid of our swamp? Did we, like, click our swamp by accident? So now we actually have the chance of just dying because of, like, a weird click thing? That's awful. Alright, well, I hope that doesn't happen. Um, him being in the tank probably means that he's just dead. Yeah, alright, so I'm glad that it didn't cost us, but it didn't, like, prompt me, I don't think. I'll have to, like, look this over, obviously, as I'm replaying it, but I'm pretty sure we're good. So he's playing white-green. Um, didn't see any uh, scouring sands targets, so that's not something I'm interested in. Demolish isn't something I'm interested in. Um, neither is Cerberus, Dark Betrayal, or Rescue from the Underworld, so I think we're just gonna run it back. Did you win round one? Uh, I did. Yay! So, this is another very good hand. Um, Freak is chosen into a temple, into perhaps Spear Point Oread, or even bestowing the Spear Point Oread on the Freak is chosen at some point. We have all the lands wherever needs, so my guess is we'll be scrying those at the bottom very shortly.
All right, so our opponent again out to a relatively quick start. Um, we may want to p play the Spear Point Oriad just because we saw the 3 2 and the 2 2. Um, although, obviously, that's not like that would be next turn. Magma Spray is something that we are extraordinarily interested in. Just kills everything he could possibly do, including possible Phalanx leaders here. Uh, definitely just in the take two camp. We favor a long game, and that game would last 10 turns if he's just attacking us with two twos every game. Alright, um, no issues with Harvest Guard, Owl Seeds. Just generally don't care about those, I guess. I'll play another land for Magma Spray. I'm not interested in playing Spear Point Oriad this turn because there's too much that could go wrong with like possible Phalanx Leaders into Ordeals or Phalanx Leader into something else. Um, if he attacks with the Harvest Guard, I don't know. Getting six mana could possibly be tough here. He's clearly baiting us to block though. Hmm. Well, I'm going to take that bait. Nope. Means he has something that he really wants to resolve. A phalanx leader. Alright, well, we're going to get that out of the way. Alright, we have something we are going to really want to resolve here. So, I'm going to just play Spearpoint Oriad out in the hopes to go Faragax Giant into then Eater of Hope. We don't have any token makers for Eater of Hope. Like, it's very good with things like Raised by Wolves and whatnot. Um, it's also very bad against a Krillin Mastiff. We'll have two cards that can both adequately block it. Um, Spidermogus isn't great with only one instant or sorcery in your graveyard. So I'm sure I'll have to give that time. I'm guessing our opponent is just going to take five here. Um, unless the plan is to tap it down with the Crow and Mastiff every turn. Hmm. I can actually attack for two now that we're in kind of a racing situation. Um, I would also love to draw any removal spell next turn. Just in order to, like, kill two of his things, because Spite of Mogus would then be live. Silence the Believers would definitely be the best. A lot of people in the uh, Twitch chat of the Pro Tour today were making the sounds of the Beliebers joke. Uh, that wasn't so great, but whatever. I guess they, they're up to their own convictions. Alright, um, so that land definitely means that we can play Eater of Hope. And while playing Eater of Hope, we have to like, sacrifice it to do things. Uh, my question is, is, is he going to tap anything down pre-combat? Looks like we are getting the giant tap down. So I might as well just attack for two here. We're going to take three, three on the swing back, but then we're going to be able to play Eater of Hope, which should stabilize things at least for the moment. Um, he's actually just going to get in there. So I guess he's playing a five mana spell this turn. It could be something like an Ornithark. Nessian, Game Warden, look like we're X and number fortune control. Okay, so he revealed nothing. What is this? Card from among them and put it into your hand. Okay. So we could actually Starfall the Acro and Mastiff. Three damage. We need to get rid of the Akron Mastiff in order to pave away for Eater of Hope. So we could do it that way. We could also attack and see what happens. That's not very effective. So in this situation you have to think how you win the game. So if we just Starfall and keep Spite of Mogus in our hand then our plan is to double block the Grove Dancer and go to four, and then if we draw a land, we're spiting the Nyxborn Shield Man playing Eater of Hope and hoping he has nothing. 
the other game plan could be to attack with everything. If he doesn't block, we starfall the Mastiff, and then next turn we keep something back and play Eater of Hope. I would put him to six, which would then make Eater of Hope lethal. That seems like the more aggressive line, but I think we take it here. Oh, he could have so many pump spells, though. Like, there could be so many. Like, this, this just leads to a bigger blowout. Okay, yeah. This is super good for us now. Um, doesn't matter. Neither of these are enchantment creatures, right? Um, yeah, so we're, it's like weird because theoretically you'd think that we are getting two for one, but in reality it's closer to even. Um, Stone Shock's definitely staying on top. The reason it's like closer to even is because we also get to turn on Spite of Mogus for the Akron Mastiff there. So I think we're actually just going to play... Ooh, this could be another uh, another one. Please don't reveal anything this time. Alright, again, just whiffed. Eater of Hope is also just dead to those things. I guess we just play Eater of Hope. Because there's a chance to have, like, a Magma Jet or another two damage spell. Alright, so he's definitely in the Nessian Game Warden camp. Which seems very good and like super important in these decks. No idea what other five drop you could have. Supply line cranes. Gonna be putting a counter on what my guess is the Nessian Wild Ravager. Although I have no idea. Oh he's putting a counter there so it can battle with Eater of Hope. Interesting, and he's just gonna get into the red zone. Um, we can't go to one here because of supply line cranes, so I'm gonna make the clean block on the on the Ravager. We are in trouble here, so our game plan right now is Stone Shock Giant, and then top deck Silence the Believers. We have to Stone Shock Giant killing that, going to we could we also have him dead to a few things. No, we don't. We just have the top deck silence. No, because Stone Chalk Giant doesn't live. I am so silly. Okay. Yeah, so he has to have nothing and we have the top deck silence. If this is more than three power, silence isn't good enough. Or silence is still good enough, but we're just going to leave a shield mate behind. All right, so there's Necrobite, which is certainly not good enough. Um, we're gonna, I guess, just play as if we had Silence. I mean, he's still just gonna go for it, obviously. Yeah, that's fine. All right, so he just like outwiddled us there. Um, Scouring Sands again, not good. Deserter's Quarters would have been okay, actually. We're on the play now. Everflame Eilon is good in the stack. Starfall is good. Flurry of Horns is very good. Spider Mogus is very good game one and very bad game two. Necrobite probably not good with ten creatures. So do we take out Necrobite for Deserter's Quarters? I think we do. Alright, because we now know that we're probably going to be playing long grindy games with this guy. Um... We're definitely playing first. This hand seems f fine. It's a very weird hand. Like, super weird hand. But, I, I mean, it's obviously a keep. Alright.
right, so sequencing is going to be an issue here, but we have no creatures, so we have no need to play Gorgon's Head. So we're just going to lead with Traveler's Amulet. Um, the question becomes next turn, if we play another, if we, like, sacrifice Amulet, also do we do it on upkeep? We actually want land, so I don't believe that we do. All right, um, so I don't think we're sacking Amulet here. I think we're just scrying into a land. Felhide Brawler is fine, but not what we want. It's going to play Gorgon's Head. So we have access to three mana, but we really need to get access to five or six, or seven preferably. Flooding out is definitely something this deck doesn't hate doing. Pinnacle of Rage... All right, well, we didn't draw the land, so we kind of just have to do it ourselves now. Well, I'm not in love with that, because it does, it does like slightly lower the chances of us drawing a land. And he has an aggressive start, um, so maybe the two land keep was a little greedy, but it also had the Traveler's Amulet and the Scry land, so I thought we were going to be able to get there, possibly. All right, no turn three play, at least. Flurry of Horns is going to be good once we draw two more lands, um, but we need to draw them very quickly, else we're going to be down and out. Down and out. Spite of Mogus is also good in this hand. Like, Spite of Mogus is an all-star in this hand. As it turns out, we may have wanted to keep Felhide Brawler, although Asphyxiate could be good against other things. Um, so I think for right now, we're just on the draw lots of lands game plan. We're going to be as able to asphyxiate whatever he plays here. Um, so we're currently just worried about drawing lands before we die. That's like the perfect thing to asphyxiate. And luckily, a very good time to draw land. Um, so one more land is going to let us... Either Flurry of Horns, ooh, freaking God's willing. They just always have the God's willing, don't they? So one more land and we're raging the Emissary. So we're literally going to six and then going to three. Or does Flurry of Horns keep us in it more? No, it doesn't. All right, so super slow draw from us. I mean, just not drawing land. So this is three more power than we're dead. Classic. Is there any way we're not dead? Well, we didn't draw the land. So I think we're just dead. Um, so we had a great game one, like terrible game two. And then we just got screwed out of our minds game three. All right, well, I guess that happens sometimes. So sorry, guys, for the disappointment. Um, I'm probably going to be putting this video up anyways because I thought, like, it was a very interesting draft deck with some interesting, like, plays in game two. Um, and in game one as well, to, like, accrue advantage. So probably going to put this up anyways. Um, so this is Sam from The Grid Games, as always. Uh, like the video if you like it. Share it if, you know, you want to or whatever. And uh, subscribe to the channel, and I will see you guys next time.